I will not take your shotgun away. I will not take your rifle away. I won't take your handgun away. Well, I, I don't know. Did he lie to us then or is he lying to us now? And it's in our power to do something about it, Obama says. No other nation has this kind of mass violence. It just doesn't happen in other advanced countries, he says. And now we have the power to do something about it. Folks, this is not about truth. It's not about facts. It is about an agenda. It's an agenda. Larry Pinckney, it's an agenda, isn't it, my friend, my brother? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely it is an agenda. And it has been ever since Obama, the Obamatron drone man, has been in office. Of course it's an agenda. How dare Obama state you know, that this is a matter of gun control. I mean, pay attention to the narrative. Yeah. Obama, Obama used the narrative of gun control for the horrific event that took place in South Carolina. This is a red herring. Thank you. This is a lie. This is Obama's hypocrisy. Abs That's what I have to say. Absolutely, Larry. And listen, we're going to talk a whole lot more about this, but I want to introduce you. My guest this afternoon is Larry Pinckney. For those of you that are Freedom Friday followers and have been for for years, you know you've heard Larry Pinckney before. By the way, Larry, it's been too long since you've been on the air here. Is that your fault or mine? How, how come it's been so long since you've been back with us? I don't think it's anybody's fault. <laughs> I think we both we both stay busy. Yeah. We both try to speak truth to power. Yep. And and so, you know, that yeah. that's the way it is, but we always both always connect. And by the way, brother, I want to uh, apologize uh publicly. Uh I'm I'm sorry. I thought I was supposed to wait for another half hour to call in, but I apologize so much to you and to the listening audience. Nobody knew. Nobody knew but you and me, so you just apologized for, for something you didn't have to apologize for. What, <laughs> what, what Larry Pinkney's talking about, I had him set up to call in uh, this, this time right here at the top of the second hour, and you just heard him say he thought it was supposed to be at the bottom of the second hour. I don't know why. I sent him 10 emails, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I sent him an email just about, uh, just a few seconds ago saying, where are you, Larry? Call in now. And as we were coming back on the air, he calls in. And so, see, nobody knew that but you and me. Nobody knew about our email. What do you think? If I reads my emails, Larry? Well, what the heck? I got to put, yeah, if the NSA reads your email. Well, yeah, but that's them. I'm talking about my audience doesn't have access to that. <laughs> you didn't apologize to the NSA, did you? Oh, no, are you kidding? They hey, need to apologize to the people of this nation. I'm Angela telling you, I'm telling that. you. Folks, let me tell you, Larry Pinckney, dear friend of mine, I've been in his home. I've sat at his table with, with Larry and his precious wife. We've enjoyed a meal together, home-cooked meal that she fixed. Uh, but, but, Larry, Larry is a great guy. Larry is a former original Black Panther uh, out of California back in the 60s, 70s, etc. Larry has been imprisoned, a uh, political prisoner, and he's told his whole story here before, and you can read about it on the Internet. He might get into some of that here in a moment. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but Larry is now a, a, a media pundit, and, and as you can tell, uh, he does not like the man that's in the White House because the deal is Larry has been a, a target of government targeting before, and I just I just kind of repeated myself. I'm sorry. He's been a victim of government targeting. He possesses the FBI files on his life and how they purposely targeted him because he was, quote, too influential among people of many colors and ethnicities. He was able to, quote, unite too many people. He was too much of a uniter, and so they put him in prison. And Larry will tell you about that. But Larry is all over mainstream media. He's all over uh, big-time uh, alternative media. He's a great friend of Freedom Friday, a guest of mine quite often. Brandon Big B has actually been in his home as well and interviewed him on video. And we've got that video interview of Larry Pinckney on the PNN News and Ministry Network. So that's Larry Pinckney. He writes, folks, uh, Larry, tell people where to find you on the Internet, because I know you write for quite a few publications, et cetera. Well, I guess the best, first of all, I want to say that my brother Carl, you know, I love you very, very much. And Big B, Brandon, you know, Brandon, you know that, yeah. wherever you are, you know that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's okay. listening. He'll be, he'll be on a little bit. 
But where, where can um, people find you, Larry? People can find me at uh, Black Activist, that's Black Activist WG. All WG stands for is Writer's Guild. So mm-hmm. Black Activist Writer's Guild, WG. Don't, don't just, Black Activist WG.org, right. okay? Uh, and uh, Intrepid Report. Okay, okay, good, good. Black, blackactivistwg.org and intrepidreport.org, and you can find Larry Pinkney, or just Google his name, and you'll yeah, find, you'll find yeah. yeah, yeah, you'll find him quickly there. Now, I've got to ask you before we continue with our discussion, are you any relation to Pastor and Senator Clementa Pinckney, who was killed in this massacre? You know, I've been receiving a, a lot of uh, calls and, and emails about that, and to be very honest with you, I really don't know. I do have relatives uh, in the South. I knew you uh, did. And on, on, on and in uh, the West Coast, on the West Coast in California. Oh. So I don't know. Uh, we do spell our names differently. So mm-hmm. I might not even be related. Mm-hmm. Uh, he spelled his name P I N, or he spelled past tense, mm-hmm. his name P I N C K N E Y. Mm-hmm. I spell my name with no C. I see. Uh, but that you know, may not even make a difference. I don't know. But you know what? Uh, Like you, my brother, he was my brother, and uh, what can I say? Yeah, no, no, I I got you. I just, I heard the name. I haven't seen it spelled. I've just heard over and over and over again on TV, Senator Pinckney. And I I thought I remembered you telling me you had some relatives in South Carolina. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So see, that's immediately, my antenna went up when I heard that, and, and I, I knew when I got you on the air I had to ask you that question. Yes, and I, pre- I appreciate it, my brother. I yeah. appreciate it. My love uh, goes out to all of my brothers and sisters, not only in South Carolina, but throughout the nation and the world, black, white, brown, red, and yellow. I love them all. Yeah. They're precious, very I know. precious. We're, we're just, you know, and in America particularly, we're just trying to live uh, in freedom and in peace and uh, you, you know, with each other and with ourselves and, and, and with God. I mean, so many of us, you know, just want to live in peace with, with the relationship with our Creator and, and get on with lives and enjoy our children and grandchildren and our families, our husbands and our wives and our good friends uh, like you and me, uh, you know, it, uh, sitting down and eating together and, and right. a, a black man and a white man uh, coming from different worlds totally, but we like each other, we love each other, uh, we love each other's families, we sit down, we enjoy life. Life is so short. Uh, you're, right. You and I are not at war with each other. I'm not at war with anybody. I'm at war with evil. I'm, I'm trying right. to, to, to hold back this tide, this flood of evil that's coming across our nation. And so much of it is flowing out of the White House and out of the halls of Congress, Larry. Yes, and unfortunately, uh, we continue to be bamboozled to use Malcolm's expression, we continue to be bamboozled. We keep on going for the ghost. You know, yeah. uh, I, I want to go back to what I had said earlier. Here you have drone man, you know, the warmongering Barack Obama, daring to bring solace, if you will, comfort, if you will, to this nation when he's murdering people all over the, the world. But not only that, look at what he's doing economically, politically, and socially in this country, he and his minions, I don't care if they're Democrats or Republicans. Oh, I really I don't agree. care. I agree. And I don't care what the color is. You understand, my yep, brother? I do. I don't care. <laughs> I do. You know, so I just want to make that very, very, very clear so that the audience is aware really where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. No, n- listen. I mean, we're on the same page on that. I, I, I do. I have said this a million times, and I just sound like I'm repeating you. I don't care if it's a D or an R, or if they're black or white, Asian, Hispanic. I look at people. I look at agendas. I, I, right. I yeah. That that's the thing. People and agendas. I, I, I look at the person, and I, and I just want to get along with the person. But of course, if the person has an evil agenda, then we're probably going to part company. Uh, but other than that, I mean, that's the only thing that makes me part company from people is is the agenda not the color of their skin not right. even the political party to which they belong right. right right and and you know i've said this a million times i believe that human beings human humans we should all have a quality of spirituality okay you know i don't consider myself you know a preacher or all that religious but i do consider myself deeply deeply spiritual which means simply that 
I believe that there's something beyond humankind. Yeah. I believe that there's something stronger and above all of us, okay? Right. And, and unfortunately, we are dealing with psychopaths. And I'm going to say it truthfully and honestly and bluntly. And that's why we have we you on, because you will be truthful and honest and blunt. <laughs> that's why we love you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, we, we've got a bunch of psychopaths from the White House on down uh, in Congress and, of course, the White House and all their minions who keep us divided, they want to, uh, 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 to perpetuate uh, uh, fear and division. I am saying, and I will say it until my last breath, that we are brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not. Yeah. And we had better understand that if we are going to improve our society, our nation, and our precious Mother Earth, we had better work together, respect each other. Of course we're going to have differences. Yeah. We should have well, differences yeah. if we don't somebody's lying. And, but let's do it with respect and honor. Right. Th- thank you, Larry. And, you know, listen, <laughs> I, I mean, this, speaking of agendas, this Rachel Dolezal case and Bruce Jenner, Jenner, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a perfect example of an agenda. You've got a white woman, and and I know you've done some research into her past. You've got some interesting information. We're going to have to take a break in a second. But anyway, you've got a white woman who, for whatever reason, claims that she identifies more with the black race and did everything she could to present herself as a black woman, fooled a bunch of people, became the head of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington. Once it was uncovered that she was really a white woman, pretending like she was a black woman, the media castigates her, calls her a liar, a kook, uh, insane, mentally ill. And then on that same week before that, that same media lifts up a 67-year-old white man that we dressed up in women's underwear and put on the head of the front cover of a magazine, Vanity Fair, and he did the exact same thing. He just changed his hair, changed his facial features, put on different clothing, and changed his pattern of speech and says, you know what, I feel more like a woman than a man. And the same media who called Dolezal a liar and a lunatic called him courageous and a hero. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, Larry, I want to shut up and let you talk about all of that, okay? I'm looking forward to it. I know you are. Folks, we're going to... Well, listen, Larry Pinkney, I, I, I want to introduce you again. Larry Pinkney, former original Black Panther back in the 60s, a former political prisoner. Uh, he's given his story before. He's got all the FBI records to prove it and to show that. Uh, he is now a media pundit. He uh, appears in major media, has appeared, I mean, PBS and, and, and on and on. You go down the line, has written for a lot of, uh, of, 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 of uh, print media, continues to write for print media. You can find him at at intrepid.com and what was the other dot org what was it uh, black activist wg dot org that's black right activist WG. that's mm-hmm. right black activist wg dot org and the wg stands for writers guild black activist wg dot org larry pinkney okay so larry help us we understand you and i understand there's an agenda in this nation there 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 are there are storylines that are being driven and if you don't fit that storyline the the socialist communist media and the white house and congress pounces all over you now i'm going to i'm going to set this up and then you go with it i don't really know which where you're going to go with this we haven't even talked about this so you may go a completely different direction than me and that's fine but the bottom line is you've got Rachel Dozal a white woman with uh, who, who makes herself up to be a black woman, becomes head of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington. She's outed. The media calls her a liar, a lunatic, and mentally ill. But just a few days before that is a white man who makes himself up to be a woman when he still has all of his male plumbing, but he puts on a woman's dress, fixes his hair, puts on lipstick, puts on women's underwear, gets on a magazine, and says, I I feel more like a woman than I do a man. And the media holds him up and calls him a hero and courageous, and they're celebrating him, and they're making him a a judge at the Miss America contest. Fox News calls him a hero, even our so-called conservative media. So Rachel Dozal is a liar and a lunatic, and Jenner is a hero and courageous and here's the thing and then i'm gonna let you go she changed her hair she changed her facial features 
She changed her dress. She changed her mannerisms. She changed her speech. But her DNA says she's white. Her parents say she's white. Her birth certificate says she's white. So she's a liar. Jenner changed his hair. He changed his facial features. He changed his dress. He changed his mannerisms. He changed his speech. But his DNA says he's a man. His birth certificate says he's a man. His, his, all of his family says he's a man, including his own children. But he says, no, I'm a woman. He's called courageous. Uh, make some kind of sense for this about this, Larry. One word, hypocrisy, and the second word, decadent. Decadent, right? yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. You know, let, let's be honest. Look, LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, uh, bisexual yeah. Yeah. transgender, mm -hmm. whatever. Look, uh, I'm not going to pretend to understand where they're coming from, so I can't speak uh, on their behalf. But I can speak on my own behalf in terms of being heterosexual and a proud heterosexual. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the fact is that when we look at both of these cases, all right, and I, and I, and I probably do have a slightly different take than you, uh, possibly. My take is this. We have uh, this woman who, who by the way, uh, and, I, and I have a real problem with this. Brandon and I were talking about this. I have a real problem with this, and a challenge with this is, you know, her parents adopted four black uh, 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 youngsters. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. I want not to not to four. They've got a biological daughter who is white. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, if you were that daughter, and I'm not defending her in any way, shape, or form, because she was totally wrong for having deceived not only the public, but probably herself as well. Yeah. Uh, all right? Mm -hmm. I want to be, be perfectly clear about that, crystal clear. Mm -hmm. but at, by the same token, if you, uh, my brother, or me, if my parents had adopted four white kids, and I'm the only, their, you know, and I'm, a, I'm their biological kid, you know, I might very well start questioning, well, wait a minute, where do I count? Right. Where do I come into all of this? Right. I think, I think quite frankly, that it's not only a deception on the part of, 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 of this 37-year-old this 30, uh, woman, but, and, and I've also read things now saying that where she's saying she's bisexual. I'm mm -hmm. going, oh, my God. Yeah, All saw, right, I here saw, we go. I know. I saw and the media too. loves that. They eat oh, that yeah. kind of stuff up. Oh, All yeah. right? Okay? But the, so they throw that into the game. Throw that into the pot. All right? Uh, but, I mean, come on. Are you going to tell me that there was not one, not one white kid who needed adoption to? Right. And love and nurturing too. Right. You're gonna adopt four black kids? I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not sorry. Let me take that back. <laughs> I'm concerned. Yeah. I I I I I think that uh, some of that responsibility for her obvious confusion uh, goes back even beyond her to her mom and dad. Yeah. All right. If my mom and dad had adopted four Chinese, and I'm their biological child, I'd be going, hmm, maybe I should catch a plane to Beijing and see if I can't learn uh, Mandarin or, you know, whatever, Chinese, and, 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 and maybe I can prove myself to them, or prove myself to them then. Right. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. Yeah. But I, I think it's important that we look at that. Now, with respect to China. Well, Larry, Larry, we've got 20 seconds. I'm sorry. Go well, all I have to say on these 20 seconds is, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. He is not a hero, in my opinion. Okay? He stepped out, whatever that really means. But why is he a hero and this other woman is a villain? Thank you. Thank you. Well, if Dolezal is a liar, Jenner is a liar, and so is the media. Larry Pinkney, thank you for being on Freedom Friday. We've got to have you back soon.